And so what the Supreme Court has ruled is anybody who files a tax return is actually a witness within the meaning of the Fifth Amendment. Meaning when I file a tax return, I, I, give, I write all this information and I give it to the government, right? The government could use all that information against me. In fact, it tells you that in, in the 1040. There's like a Privacy Act notice there. And it says any information you give us can and will be used against you. OK, well, what do you know? If the government tells you that any information you give us can be used against you in a criminal trial, well, then are you obligated to, to give it? Of course not. Right. You can't be compelled to give the government information because if you were, they couldn't use it against you. In fact, and this happens you know, quite often, if somebody is charged with income tax evasion, right, and the government takes you to court, they introduce probably the number, the first piece of evidence, exhibit A, is the tax return that you filed. And they try to show that the tax return you filed, you know, was fraudulent. Either there was income that you didn't report or there were phony deductions that you, that you put on the return, but they introduce your return. Now, if you object or if your lawyer objects and says, objection, your honor, um, you know, we object to the introduction of this tax return, right? Uh, because my, you know, you can't use information against my client. My client prepared the return. The judge will rule, well, the return was filed voluntarily. And because it was filed voluntarily, we can use it against you. That's what they do. Except it's not really voluntary because they will punish you now for not filing, right? You can be put in jail, even though there's technically there's no law. Right. Because they couldn't put any real penalties for not filing an income tax return, because if there were penalties for not filing an income tax return, it wouldn't be voluntary. The only way for it to be voluntary is for the is if there's no penalties, if you don't file, because that's the only way you can get somebody with tax evasion. You have to use their return against them and you can only use the return against them if it is filed voluntarily. If you're if, if people were actually compelled to file a tax return, they can lie all they want. They can write whatever they want on there because it can never be used against them because the government cannot use compelled testimony against anybody. But the government got around this by claiming that compliance with the income tax was voluntary. And because it's voluntary, then all the information that you put on the return could be used against you because you weren't required to supply it. Except now they punish people for not filing. They put people in jail for not filing. Therefore, filing is compulsory. So what the state of Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey could do is they could go after the income tax for that reason, right? That it is a voluntary, it's supposed to, filing is supposed to be voluntary. It's supposed to be based on voluntary compliance and self-assessment. If, you know, but it's not, right? There's so many things, there's so many aspects about the income tax that are unconstitutional. I said, everything about the income tax is unconstitutional. I mean, we, you know, if, if you think about it, I mentioned this on the last podcast, once you've given the government the ability to tax your income to any level they want, I mean, we're all slaves of the government. I mean, in theory, based on the way the courts look at the income tax, the government can take 100% of our income. Every American citizen, the government can take all your income. The fact that the income tax rate is not 100% is a gift from the government. The fact that we have any deductions, mortgage deduction, charitable deduction, that's all a gift from the government. Right. So if the government claims ownership to all of our incomes and all we get to keep is what they decide that we're allowed to have, how are we sovereign people? How are we free people? We're living in a, in, in, in a tyranny. This is a gigantic plantation. We're all slaves to an all powerful government. Do you think the founding fathers, when they created this country, thought they were creating a government with that much power that can basically confiscate the wealth? of all the citizens, this is the limited government. And the same thing with the Federal Reserve. We said, you know, the Federal Reserve can print money and buy whatever it wants, buy up all the assets, nationalize everything. So we now have a government that is all powerful. Now, obviously that can't be legal. That is not what the framers set up, a limited government I mean, initially we were operating under the Articles of Confederation. The federal government had no power at all. And then we said, okay, let's give the federal government a tiny bit of power, but let's make sure that we, you know, we bind the, the government in the chains of the constitution. Well, you know, the states need to put those chains back on, right? Because none of the states would have ratified the constitution back in, you know, uh, 1790, whenever they ratified it, none of them would have done it had, it been, had there been a federal income tax. None of them would have done it had there been a Federal Reserve. None of them would have done it if they thought that the federal government would ever be able to do anywhere near all the things that it's doing now. So if the states are going to take a stand, take a real stand 
and take a stand that might work and try to bring back right states sovereignty it used to be the united states are right the united states it was the, the states were sovereign they they had come together the united states of america you you were a citizen more of your state than you were of the federal government that is how that is the principle of federalism that is how the country started so that's what these states should be fighting for right fighting to bring the federal government back in check because it has completely grown like a cancer. It has destroyed all the, 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 the change that bound it. And the states are the ones that need to bind it back up. The states are the ones that need to force the government to uh, live within uh, its constitutionally enumerated powers. Now, the courts are supposed to do that, but the courts have just let the federal government get away with murder. But if the state governments take a stand and they come together, then they could check the power of the federal government. And the courts can't just dismiss their arguments as being frivolous because they're being raised by a tax protester. You have you know, legitimacy when you have state governments constitutionally challenging the authority that has been usurped uh, by the federal government and the federal government is acting outside of its constitutional authority and somebody needs to bring them back in the line and this is their opportunity to do it.